Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to part four of the house of Yahweh and Yahusha. And we're going to pick it up where we left off at, brothers and sisters. If you haven't watched part four, uh, go watch it. This is part four and a half, brothers and sisters, to complete that particular uh, video. This is where we left off, where it says, for Ishmael and his sons and his brothers and Esau, the master did not cause, or Yahweh did not cause to approach him. And he chose them not because they are the children of Abraham, because he knew them, but he chose Yahshua to be his people. And he set it apart and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. For there are many nations and many peoples, and all are his, and over all have he placed spirits and authority to lead them astray from him. But over Yahshua, he did not appoint any messenger or spirit, for he alone is their ruler, and he will preserve them and require them at the hand of his messengers and his spirits and at the hand of his powers, in order that he may preserve them and bless them and barak them, and that they may be his and he may be theirs from henceforth forever. So there is a very special relationship between the Most High and Yahshua, brothers and sisters, that his son is only begotten to redeem Yahshua, to save them and bring them back to their position and place as kings and priests on the earth. And we shall reign and rule over the nations, for the nations were given to us by the hand of the Most High, by him, his doing, brothers and sisters. And there was one more scripture I forgot to read at the end of that last video, but we can catch it right here. That's Isaiah 63 and 19 to bear witness to that. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by thy name. Y'all see that? We were given the name of the Most High. For we were his inheritance. So he inherited us as his sons and daughters. And that's why we bear the name Yah or Yahoo in our names, brothers and sisters. Even those slave names had those names in them. If you check those uh, old records of the slaves listed coming over during the transatlantic slave trade. But anyway, we are his inheritance. So Yahusha came through Judah to establish the kingship on earth, which was given to King David and King David's sons. And he is the son that would sit on the throne of David, though he was before David. Brothers and sisters, he came through David to wash away our sins and establish the throne back to the father which Adam pretty much gave to the to the wicked one. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at the some of these physical aspects. We took a look at the spiritual aspects of the kingdom and we saw some of the physical, but let's look at some more of the physical aspects of the kingdom of Yahusha. Let's go to Hosea. Now we're just going to take a look at the alluring of Yahshua back to the Most High through the Son. It's going to take just a brief look. And we're just going to cover a few of these scriptures. Can't cover in them all, brother and sister, but I know y'all can throw in a lot of scriptures to add to this. And I got videos about the other scriptures as well concerning what's going to take place right before and during. Uh, Yahusha's return, brothers and sisters. This is Hosea chapter 2, verse 14. And we're going to read down to 20. <clears throat> Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her her vine vineyards from thence and the valley of a chore for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, 
as in the day when she came out of the land of Mizraim, and it shall be at that day, saith Yahweh, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shalt call me no more Baali. <laughs> Baali. Let me say Baali. <laughs> For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beast of the field. This is what's going to take place when Yahweh shall return with his elect. That's going to judge the twelve tribes. The ones that's going to have their new bodies with him. As a bride. Spotless. Without blemish or wrinkle. In the spirit. Reign and rule in the spirit. And he's going to call the rest physically back into the land and purge them out we're gonna get to ezekiel chapter 20 next but there's going to be a covenant made with the beasts of the field and the fowls of shamayim or the fowls of the sky and with the creeping things on the ground like spiders and tarantulas and stuff scorpions there's going to be a covenant made with them and i will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yeah, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness and thou shalt know Yahuwah. Y'all see this? So this going to be us spiritually in the land and physically in the land. Those who made it and made the change and have their new bodies and those who are physically going to be brought back and going to be physically setting up the kingdom. And he's going to make covenant with all the beasts and the fowls and the creeping things and they won't hurt you no more. No longer you have all those things biting you and scaring you and creeping up on you and attacking you and nah, -uh, no more of that. Not even a dog shall wag his tongue against us. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Ezekiel chapter 20. Prove some more of this. Okay, this is Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 33. We're talking about the physical Yahshua lights that's going to be brought back in. We talked about the spiritual ones first. Now we're talking about the physical ones. And we're also looking at the house of Yahusha. Which is the house of Yahweh. Right here says, As I live, saith Yahweh Almighty, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. He's talking about Yahshirah. Remember, he has chosen Yahshirah and he is our ruler alone. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I, I plead. Will I plead with you face to face? Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Mizraim, so will I plead with you, saith Yahweh, Alua. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. And them that transgress against me. I will bring. So wait a minute. Let's start right here. So he's, he's bringing back this group. Of the twelve tribes of Yasharal. If they were changed. There would be no rebels among them. So he has to purge this group out just as he did in the first gathering. And he purged that group out, brothers and sisters. But remember when he took Moses first? Moses on that burning bush. Y'all remember that? He taught Moses and he called Moses first to prepare Moses. To lead his people. To judge his people. That was also a look at. What's about to take place. With those who died in Hamashiach. And those who are alive in him. Which will be caught up to him. And they will judge the twelve tribes of Yasharal. With Hamashiach. So we see the same thing that took place with Moses. And the twelve tribes physically. Yeah, 
Remember when Moses came down that mountain when his, his face was shining as the sun, right? His face shone and people were scared of him. He was like changed almost, but he wasn't all the way because it's, he was around the glory of the esteem of the Most High. His face shone with that, with that esteem, brothers and sisters. Y'all see that foreshadow of what's happening, what's, what's fixed to happen now? that's written in the scriptures where we who are alive I'm not telling no rapture either throw that out your mind the preacher rapture and all that other stuff no there's a group that's waiting for the other ones to die and though there's going to be another group that's going to be alive remain they're going to be caught up they're going they're going to change in a twinkling of eye in, in, in the instant they're going to die and be reborn. And they're going to meet Hamashiach in the air. And they're going to set foot on Mount Olive with him. Brothers and sisters. And back in 20, was it 2013 or 2012? I had this dream vision where I was caught up. And I met him in the air. And he was giving instructions and I was paired off with somebody. We came right back down and we set foot on the side of a mountain. Now, I don't remember all the instructions, but some of it I do remember. Uh, but I was paired off with somebody and we was wearing white, white robes and we set foot on the side of the mountain after we were caught up. So that lines up with scriptures, brothers and sisters. But anyway, after, after that take place, this group is going to be called. And they're going to be uh, led into the wilderness. But these rebels will be purged out. So all of us cannot be changed at this time, brothers and sisters. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because you won't be able to have children. And he won't be able to fulfill this by purging out the rebels, if that was the case. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn or live, and they shall not enter into the land of Yah, I mean Yahshirah, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. As for you, O house of Yahshirah, thus saith Yahweh, Alua. Remember the house of Yahshirah. Remember, ten people are going to be grabbing a hold of us. There's going to be other strangers, servants and handmaids coming into our house with us. They walking in with us. They going to have the covenant put in them too because the father says he's finishing Yahshirah, the whole house. He's done with that. These other strangers and Gentiles are going to be joined on to our house, so they're going to be completed as well. This is another part that many are not understanding. But the ones outside of our land, they're going to have the curses on them. They're going to be outside of our land outside of what we're going to be getting brothers and sisters we're going to be completed along with everyone that's tied to us in whatever position or place these other uh strangers that's going to be joined on to us grafted in to us whatever position place they're going to be in amongst us so we're discussing the house of yasharal what is the house of yasharal what it is what does it encompass what is all of it as for you, O house of Yahshua, thus save Yahweh Alua. Go ye serve ye every one as idol, and hereafter also, if you will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my set apart name no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in my set apart mountain, in the mountain of the heights of Yahshua, save Yahweh Alua, there shall all the house of Yahshua, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your set apart things. Y'all get that? This is the whole house of Yahuwah we're talking about. And we got one more script, no, a few more scriptures to go over before we get into the house of Yahuwah. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 8. Again, we're proving also that. There's going to be a spiritual and a physical side to Yahweh's, Yahusha's kingdom. And of course, Yahweh's kingdom shall be all spirit at the end of all things. 
but he still has to purge out and uh, punish the Gentiles. So that has to happen during the thousand year reign. And then everything will be put in, put an end to once the evil one is loosed again to deceive all the nations to finish the purging out of the Gentiles and the punishment of the Gentiles as well on this earth in the flesh. And then all things be put away. But we're looking at the physical aspect now of those coming in the kingdom with Zechariah chapter 8 verse 1. Again, the word of Yahweh of hosts came to me saying, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy. And I was jealous for her with great fury. Thus saith Yahweh, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of Yahweh of hosts, the set apart mountain. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, there shall yet, y'all listen closely, there shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for very age. So, how could you be a new body and be old age with a staff in your hand? There is two sides of this gathering spiritual and physical we're going over this physical aspect where this prophecy must be fulfilled whether you like it or not it will be fulfilled and the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls how are you going to have boys and girls unless you procreate unless you're marrying and giving in marriage and, and 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 women can get pregnant how can how can you do this if you are all changed and have all spiritual bodies. You can't because you'll be as the messengers, neither given in marriage nor marrying. For you all will be one with the Most High. You are not going to be getting given in marriage when you reach your immortal, incorruptible state, brothers and sisters. So this part must be fulfilled, and the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Thus saith Yah of hosts, if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of his people, of this people, in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes? Save Yah of hosts. Thus saith Yah of hosts, behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of them, in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people. And I will be their Alua in truth and in righteousness. Hallelujah. Yahuwah, brothers and sisters. Let's drop down to verse 23. Or shall I say over to verse 23? It says, Thus saith Yah of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of skirt of him that is called a Hebrew, saying, We shall, we will go with you, for we have heard that Yah, Yahuwah is with you. So this is during the gathering of all twelve tribes. That's why I said Hebrew here. It's not just Judah. But there will be a gathering of all twelve tribes at this time. Uh, though he said he would gather Judah first, right? But when the nations find out, all oh, wait a minute, these the real ones. Their mouths gonna be gapped open. They gonna be tripping, up, slipping, and falling all over each other, trying to get to you, so they could bring you back to your land and 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 get a baracking from being a baracking to the Most High. So they're gonna wanna what they call the word bless. They want to bless you after that and bring you as an offering unto the Most High and say, here, Father, here's just one of your sons. You know, they're going to be grabbing a hold of us and coming with us. I, I want to come with y'all. You the real ones. Some of them going to come into the land and they're going to be serving you. There's going to be Syria and Egypt joined on to us, and Yasharal shall be the one in the middle of the two the, those those two lands. Even they are being prepared for us, Zion. Syria and Mizraim, as scriptures say. That's why Mizraim went into his 
servitude that he may be uh, punished and also being corrected as well. And as scriptures say, if they refuse to come up in if three times a year, the Most High will put the curses on all the nations, even them, Egypt as well, if they refuse to come up. But they also, the scriptures say, that they will build an altar in their land to the Most High. That's right. And that's why they're going to be joined on to us as well, brothers and sisters. But um, those who are in our land with us, that's going to be amongst us. They're going to have the law of such commands put in their minds and hearts to do them as well. As Jeremiah 31 speaks what would happen to all the house of Yahshua. But you got to remember that we are the heads of our households. As I explained in the uh, first parts of this series, we are the heads of those households. We are the older brothers. We are the older sisters of the 12 tribes. And you will reign and rule over your brother and because it was given to you as an inheritance. So they become a part of the great household of the Most High, whom he appointed you as kings and priests over all the nations. And those that do not want to serve, of course, they're going to get their just due. Some of them are going to go into captivity. Some of them are going to be uh, sold to the Sabians. All those things of the scriptures will be fulfilled. None will be left void, brothers and sisters. But you will have those uh, Gentiles that will freely come in and they will be willing to serve the Most High by serving His elect in whatever capacity the Father's appointed them to serve us. They're going to do this freely. There's going to be some coming in captivity. There's going to be some coming to be servants and handmaids. There's going to be some coming in to be appointed over your flocks over your businesses um they're going to be appointed in different positions in, in in the armies remember they have always been in our armies as well that's been proven in the in those videos i did before this one you have to remember these things and understand the fullness of the house of yahweh is the same fullness of the house of yahusha which is the same fullness of the house of yahshirah and all the way back to House of Abraham, brothers and sisters. That's why we're, I mean, yeah, yeah, House of Abraham. That's why we're going over this series. So now that we covered that, let's go to First Peter. Okay, this is First Peter, brothers and sisters. I want to read these last two uh, books scriptures in these last two books before we go to the house of Yahweh. And this is first Peter one through five. Peter, an apostle of Yahusha Hamashek, to the strangers scattered through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect according to the foreknowledge of Yahweh the Father, through uh Set a uh, sanctification, I'll just say that word, but through set apartness of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahushua and Meshach, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So, first of all, there was Yahshua lights in all these areas that Peter and Paul went to. They went to the synagogues in those areas. If they were synagogues, there were Yahshua lights had over them, some from the northern kingdom and some from the kingdom of Yehuda. Both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom were scattered into all those areas from the different captivities. Not only from uh, the Babylonian captivity and the Median Persian captivity, but the, the Greek captivity and the Roman captivity. We were scattered in all these areas of the Roman Empire. We were there, brothers and sisters, and eventually we took over. And we were, and that was known as the Dark Ages when we was ruling Europe or over the Roman Empire. Y'all can do all this homework on your own, brothers and sisters, but there's plenty of videos about this out there uh, where we indeed were in these areas and 
ruled these areas for a time. So these letters are for those who are scattered in those areas, being called back to the truth and to the faith of the Most High. It says here, verse 3, Blessed be Yahweh and Father of our Master, Yahshua HaMashiach, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahshua HaMashiach from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in Shamayim for you, who are kept by the power of Yahweh through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So when he return in the regeneration, you're going to see the elect. You're going to see those pure ones, the bride, be changed into incorruptible bodies. And you're going to see the gathering of the 12 remnant, 12 tribes. And they're going to be brought in and have the, have the law, statutes, commandments put in their minds and hearts to do them. And the rebels will be purged out. And then they will have children. And they will, um, there will be a covenant with all the land. The land is going to be complete. No animal will touch you. No animal will bite you, hurt you. No insect, no scorpion, spider, anything that creep up, creepeth the one to hurt you and bite you and eat you. Crocodile won't, won't even do nothing. You won't even have a crocodile there, probably. I'm just saying probably because I don't know. But he said he'll make a covenant even with the beast. But anyway, yes, there will be physical Hebrews, Yashraelites, in the land to rebuild it, to reign and rule over the earth in the physical. And there will be a spiritual group that's going to judge the 12 tribes and the spirit and reign and rule in the spirit with Yahusha. With their new spiritual bodies. Hallelujah. Let's go on to the last one before the house of Yahweh. Uh, and the house of Yahweh is going to go pretty quickly. So y'all hold on tight. We're going to Colossians chapter 1. Okay. This is Colossians chapter 1 verse 1 through 12. Paul. An apostle of Yahshua Meshach by the will of Yahweh, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and, uh, and faithful brethren in, in Hamashiach, which are at Kolosh, grace be unto you in peace from Yahweh, our Father, and Yahushua Meshach. We give thanks to Yahweh and our Father, uh, of Yahusha Mashiach, praying always for you. Whew, sorry, brothers and sisters, I kind of ran out of breath there. Just trying to catch my breath so I can finish this video. Okay, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Yahusha Mashiach and the love which you have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in Shemaim. Where have you heard before in the word of the truth of, of the good news, which is come unto you, as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day you heard of it, and knew the grace of Yahweh in truth, as you also learned of Epaphras, Epaphras our dear fellow servant, who is for you and faithful minister of Yahusha, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthily of the of of Yahusha unto all, of Yahweh unto all pleasing, being fruitful in good every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of Yahweh, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, give you thanks unto the Father which hath made us met to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Oh, hallelujah, brothers and sisters. This is 
the saints, this is the elect. This is who we are. This is what we're going to be. We're going to look like no other. We're going to be filled with that which was filled in Hamashiach. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel. The spirit of love toward one another. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. So, we got a brief look at the physical bringing in of Yasharal in the land. Just as we got in a, vis uh, a brief look at the spiritual bringing in of Yasharal and the house of Yasharal unto the Messiah when he returned. So, you got both these groups happening that this is going to happen. At the time of his return to set up the kingdom of Yahuwah, brothers and sisters. That's what Yahusha is doing. So he's actively completing the finality of Yahusharal. And then he's punishing and completing or bringing those other Gentiles through the fire after he's done with us and that's going to take place outside of our land for our land will be complete and done there'll be nothing need need be done with Yasharal or the house of Yasharal anymore and including the land itself it's going to be complete and done the only thing be left to do will be deal with the Gentiles outside of our land who didn't make it in with us. Okay. So now let's go to. The house of Yahweh. And let's start with. Hosea chapter. 8. Okay. Now we're going to. Get into the house of Yahweh. And we laid the foundation with. The house of Abraham. Isaac. Jacob. The twelve sons of Jacob. And their descendants after them. And we laid the foundation with Yahusha and his kingdom. We saw that as part spiritual and part physical. And we, we got to look at who's all included into that house as well. And um, some other aspects of that house. Now let's look at the Most High. Right in Hosea chapter 8 verse 1 it says... Set the trumpet of thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of Yahuwah. Because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. So we know that um, these different nations came against the house of Yahuwah. And took us into captivity because we transgressed against his covenant and trespassed against his law. So I just wanted to establish that, yes, we are his house. Remember, the body is the temple of the Most High, which he wants to dwell in, right? We are his house, not just the land, the physical land and the physical city of Jerusalem, but the people as well. He, re he, he, re he wants to reside in us. We are his embodiment. We are his house on the earth. When he puts his spirit in us, he dwells in us. Y'all y'all see what I'm saying right here? So the house of Yahweh is not just his, his land. It's us. It's us and all who are joined to us in a perpetual covenant. As long as we don't trespass against the covenant and trespass against his law. So let's go on further to uh, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, Yahweh created the Shamaim and the earth. Now we're just establishing that in the beginning, He created. This is all His. We, are all, we, we belong to Him. We are all in all. We are all His creation. He created he well, 
he begot of himself Yahusha, who was begotten of him, who came out of him. Y'all understand? Just as he begotten the the set apart messengers, he he created them. And he created us out of the dirt of the ground, brothers and sisters. As it says, oh, where does it say that at? Right here. Let us make man in our, our own image and after our, our likeness. And let him have dominion over the flesh, over the fish, sorry, of the sea. And over the fowl of the air and over the cattle. He gave us this wonderful earth to steward and be masters over it but of course we fell we fell brothers and sisters and we lost that dominion to the evil one and he has dominion because sin entered the world but he sent one to bring bring that dominion back to Adam through the second Adam, who was actually the first before Adam. And he accomplished that when he died for all sin on that tree, when he was crucified, to restore all things that the Father had created to give to us in the first place. And he shall reign and rule over us forever. And he has appointed his son to be the high, high priest and the king over Yasharal and Yasharal will be kings and priests over the whole earth and reign and rule over it there is an order brothers and sisters and let's go to uh, Genesis 2 1 through 3 where he established the Sabbath day as a day of rest as a sign of completion this is going to be the complete kingdom of the Most High. When it's complete, when all things be prepared for us, when that set apart city from above comes down, that city of peace comes down from the Most High. After he renews the earth and the, and the Shamains, he's going to bring that city down, prepared. Remember, Yahushua said, I go to prepare a place for you. This is for the Sabbath, the seventh day of rest, the day when all things are prepared. Now we are entering into a rest as well for a thousand years, brothers and sisters, and this thousand year reign with Hamashiach. Well, the Gentiles are going to have the curses on them. They're going to be going through things and and they're going to go through their test trials and tribulation at the same time. We are having a seven day rest. But the final rest where things are prepared for is going to happen when the Most High return let's look right here it says thus the Shemaine and the earth were finished and all the host of them and on the seventh day Yahweh ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all of his work which he had made and Yahweh blessed and barocked he barak the seventh day and set it apart because that in it he had rested from all his work which Yahweh created and made. This is a sign, brothers and sisters, between us and the Most High. Let's go to um, uh, let me go to Revelations 21 1 through 3 real quick before we go to Jubilees. Let's drop down to Revelations 21. We're going to come back to Revelations 21 again. And let's see where am I? Okay, got to go down. Let's see if I can get that to go a little bit faster. Okay, Revelations 21, where are you? We're going to read just one through three. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, a new Shem Shemaim and a new earth. For the first Shemaim and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. And I, John, or Yukon, saw the set-apart city, 
New Jerusalem coming down from Yahweh out of Shammai, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I had a great voice out of Shammai, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yah is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Yahweh shall himself shall be with them and be their allure. So right here we're establishing that, yes, he will come dwell amongst us. Yes, he's prepared a city for uh, a set apart city which he's going to be dwelling in when he come down here on the earth when Shemaine and earth become one brothers and sisters so just wanted to establish that uh, and let's go into Jubilees 1 chapter 1 and Jubilees is a book that Moses wrote, brothers and sisters. And uh, let's go and read some things out of here, which we already read, Jubilees chapter 15. But you ought to really read it and read it carefully and check some of these translations, brothers and sisters. Um, some of these translations are not correct. It says here in Jubilees chapter 1, verse 1, And it came to pass in the first year of the exodus of the children of Yahshua out of Mizraim in the third month, on the sixteenth day of the month, that Yah spoke to Moses, saying, Come up to me on the mount, and I will give thee two tables of stone of the law and of the commandment, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses went up into the, into the mount of Yahweh, and the glory of Yahweh abode on Mount Sinai, and a cloud overshadowed it six days. And he called to Moses on the seventh day, out of the midst of the cloud. And the appearance of the esteem of Yahweh was like a flame of fire on the top of the mount. And Moses was on the mount forty days and forty nights. And Yah sought, and Yah taught him. Yahweh taught him the earlier. And the later history of the division of all the days of the law and of the testimonies. So all the days of the law were even before Moses. Though he was given the law, statutes, and commandments to give to the people of Yahshua, but the law was here before Moses, brothers and sisters. Because he was given the letter history the earlier and the latter history of all the divisions of all the days of the law and of the testimony. Just wanted to cover that part, brothers and sisters. There was law from the Most High in the earth that the sin happened. There was law given to uh, Adam and his descendants, the ones who obeyed, all the way up to Enoch. Read the book of Enoch. There was law being taught in the earth at that time. Just wanted to establish that. And all that was for the kingdom of Yahuwah. So let's go forward to chapter 2, verse 1. No, I'm sorry. Let's go down to 27 through 29. Sorry about that. 27 through 29. Okay. Jubilees chapter 1, verse 27 through 29. And he said to the messenger of the presence... Write for Moses from the beginning of creation till my sanctuary has been built among them for all eternity. And Yahweh will appear to the eyes of all and all will know that I am the Elua of Yasharal and the father of all the children of Jacob and king on Mount Zion for all eternity. And Zion and Jerusalem will be set apart and the ancient and the messenger of the presence who went before the camp of Yashua took the tables of the divisions of the years from the time of the creation of the law and of the testimony of the weeks of the jubilees according to the individual years according to all the number of the jubilees according to the individual years from the day of the new creation when the Shamains and the earth shall be renewed and all the, their creation according to the powers of Shemaim and according to all the creation of the earth 
until the sanctuary of Yahweh shall be made in Jerusalem on Mount Zion and all the luminaries be renewed for healing and for peace and for baraking for all the elect of Yahshirah and that thus it may be from that day and unto all the days of the earth. So the Most High made the earth to be inhabited by himself and us, Zion. And we will dwell amongst him when he make Shamayim and earth one again, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So let's drop down to Revelation, I mean, uh, Jubilees chapter 2. And we're going to start with verse 1. And the message of the presence. Now this message of the presence that went before us is the same one that went before us. Make Michael, who went before us, uh, whom the Most High worked through when we went into the land. When we went into uh, into the land of Canaan, brothers and sisters, and we took that over. This is the same one that was with us in the wilderness as well, brothers and sisters. But he sent that, the messenger of the presence before us, that he may not, you know, vaporize us because we was tripping out there. But he put his name and he's put his word with this messenger who was the one over us. Write the complete history of creation. How in six days Yahweh Alua finished all his works and all that he created. And keep Sabbath on the seventh day and hallowed it for all ages. And appointed it as a sign for all his works. This Sabbath day was special brothers and sisters. It's, it's a sign for completion. Everything complete and everything prepared for all the elect, the ones who make it. So let's drop down to 17 through 22. And he gave us a great sign, the Sabbath day, that we should work six days, but keep Sabbath on the seventh day from all work. And all the messages of presence and all the angels of sanct messages of sanctification, these two great classes he have hidden us to keep the sabbath with him in shamayin and on earth so we along with the messengers of the presence and sanctification we keep sabbath with him it's a great sign of the completion of years and he said unto us behold i will separate unto myself a people from among all the peoples and these will keep the sabbath day and I will sanctify them unto me uh, unto myself as my people and will barack them and I and I have sanctified the Sabbath day and do sanctify it unto myself or set it apart unto myself even so shall I barack them and they will be my people and I shall be their alua and I have chosen the seed of your cold from amongst all that I have seen and have written him down as my firstborn. We are his firstborn. And have sanctified him unto myself forever and ever. It's forever. And I will teach them the Sabbath day. That's why the seventh day is important. It's correct, important that we get the correct one. Brothers and sisters, and that's the work I'm doing with the calendar to get it right that they may keep Sabbath thereon from all work. And thus he created therein a sign in accordance with them with which they should keep Sabbath with us on the seventh day to eat and to drink and to barack him who have created all things as he have barocked and sanctified unto himself a peculiar people above all peoples and that they should keep Sabbath together with us. And we bear witness to this statement in Deuteronomy chapter 7, uh, verse 6, where he has a peculiar people above all peoples, brothers and sisters. And he, of course, he made the world for our sakes. We bear witness to that in the earlier part of the video, uh, part 1 of part 4. 
and he caused his commandments to ascend as a sweet savor, acceptable for him all the days. Wow. This is how precious the Sabbath is and his law such commandments are, brothers and sisters. Or we must abhor, uh, ab abhere to them. Let's go to 26. Wherefore do thou command the children of Yahshua to observe this day that they may keep it set apart and not do thereon any work and not to defile it as it is set apart more than all other days. Brothers and sisters, this is why you should, shouldn't work. This is a foreshadow of being with the Most High where he has prepared all things for us. And you won't have to work or labor for these things that he has prepared for us. Great things. I have not seen, ear have not heard the things he has prepared for those who obey his commandments, brothers and sisters. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Those who love him and he, them. And who and whoever profaneth it shall surely die. And whoever doth thereon any work shall surely die eternally. That the children of Yahshua may observe this day throughout their generations and not be rooted out of the land for it is a set apart day and a barak day and everyone who observeth and keepeth sabbath thereon from all this work will be set apart and barak throughout all the days like unto us that includes the twelve tribes throughout all the generations and their households you are the head of your household zion Head over your children and head over your servants and handmaids and all who are joined on to your house freely are um, brought with money or any other case. Declare and say to the children of Yashara, the law this day, both that they should keep Sabbath their own and that they should not forsake it in the error of their hearts and that it is not lawful to do any work their own which is unseemly to do their own their their own pleasure and that they should not prepare their own anything to be eaten or drunk and that it is not lawful to draw water or bring in or take out their own through the gates any burden which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwelling so brothers and sisters this is the reason why even your your handmaids and your servants must rest and all animals must rest they're all partaking in this, in your household, the covenant that's been placed upon Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's and Yahshua's households. They are to rest, for the coming rest will be restful indeed forever, and none of us will work. You understand? We will all be renewed underneath Yahusha. And we will all have our new spiritual bodies, all sons and daughters renewed underneath the second Adam for eternity, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. 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 Doesn't mean we lose our position to place Zion as his firstborn and and as his um, uh, rulers forever, you know, be his elect, his saints. We don't lose that position of place. So let's continue to read. And they shall not bring in nor take out from house to house on that day. For that day is more set apart in Barak than any jubilee day of the jubilees. On this we keep Sabbath and the Shamaeans. Before it was made known to any flesh to keep Sabbath there on the, on the earth. And the creator of all things Barak did. But he did not sanctify all peoples and nations to keep Sabbath thereon, but Yasharal alone. Them alone he permitted to eat, drink, and to keep Sabbath thereon the earth. And the creator of all things, Barak this day, which he had created from for Baraking and a set apart and an esteem above all days. This law and testimony was given to the children of Yah Sharah as a law forever unto their generations. So we're proving the house of Yah Yahuwah right now is also the same house of Yah Sharah, the same house of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
the same house of Moses, the same house of Yahusha. It's the same from the beginning to the end. Brothers and sisters, he changes not. This seven day, seven day is a sign that all things will be prepared for us. Paradise prepared for us. And all things from the Father given to us because he gave all things to the son and now the son has given us access to all things for those who are in him will partake in all the things the father has given to him and to us hallelujah let's go now to revelations chapter 20 and we're gonna close this thing out with chapter 20 and 21 and 22 we're not gonna read all of it Now we already read 1 through 3. Let's read 4 through 8 of um, chapter 20 and a little bit more chapter 20. Then we're going to come back to Revelation 21 and we're going to go from 4 to 13. So we're going to read 4 through 8 first. Let's go chapter 20, 4 through 8. First, then we're going to drop down and read 11 through, uh, let me see, 11 through 15. This is talking about the, the, the uh, kingdom of Yahweh, the house of Yahweh. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahusha and for the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead. Now we read that a little bit earlier. Or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with, with Hamashiach a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Barak, and set apart, is is he that have part in the first resurrection on such the second death have no power but they shall be priests of Yahweh and of Hamashiach and shall reign with them a thousand years and when a thousand years are expired Hashatan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number whom is as the sand of the sea Let's go down to go over to 11. And we're going to read 11 through 15. And I saw a great white throne and him that him that sat on it. Him that sat on it. From whose face the earth and heaven shamane fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before Yahweh. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those books, out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death, and death and hell, or Shaul, delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell, Shaul, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is the second harvest thing, brothers and sisters, that I was talking about in the first part. You had the first harvest coming up when Yahushua returned, but we had the sheaf offering already when Yahushua was raised from the dead. After the Passover, after the, the unleavened bread, there's the Feast of Weeks. Bef uh, right before that, you're supposed to do a sheaf offering, which Yahushua was the first fruit offering that's what that represents then you have after the feast of weeks the harvest on day 50 that you're supposed to celebrate right so the the harvest is coming is coming when yahushua return and gather his precious ones for the bride for the wedding of the lamb that they will may reign and rule in spirit over the the world of the of the flesh when he gathered the twelve tribes in the flesh and bring them back in the land that they may have children and populate as the sand of the sea and fulfill all those other prophecies that's written 
So you got dual prophecies of spiritual prophecies and physical prophecies. Prophecies that happened during the kingdom of Yahusha. Now this is all spirit where all flesh must die and be judged. And all spirit will be around the most high. Or at least the righteous spirits. This is the second death. This is the second harvest. That's written in the scriptures. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of Shemaim. So we read this part right here. Uh, but let me go ahead and read it anyway again. 1 through 13. And I saw a new Shemaim, a new earth. For the first Shemaim and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the set-apart city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahweh out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Remember, we're the body of Hamashiach. We're the body of the Most High to dwell. This is the body he's building. This is the house of Yahuwah, who he's building us, a temple to dwell in. And I heard a great voice out of Shaman saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and Yahweh himself shall be with them, and be their lure. And Yahweh shall wipe away all tears from the eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he, he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am out from Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his allure, and he, I, and he shall be my son or daughter. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have the part in the lake uh, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Y'all see that? The second death. And there came unto me one of the seven messengers. And had the seven vows full of the last seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come here, that I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the set apart Jerusalem, descending out of Shamaim from Yahweh, having the esteem of Yahweh. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Let's drop down to, um, to read. Uh, well, let's, let's continue on right here. Let's continue on 13. And had a great wall and, ha and high. And had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 messengers. And names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Yahshirah. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, on the west three gates. Hallelujah. Now we're going to drop down to verse 22. We're just looking at the setting. And it was going to be in there, right? Verse uh, 22 through, let me see, we're going to go through 27. Oops. And I saw no temple therein, for Yahweh Almighty, Alua Almighty, and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the esteem of Yahweh did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their esteem and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the esteem and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. 
Yahuwah. Let's read Revelations 1 through 4. We're almost done. Y'all hang in there. And he showed me a pure river water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of Yahweh and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which had bare twelve manner fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of Yahweh, and, the, and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Hallelujah. Let's drop down to 7. Read that one. Behold, I come quickly. Barak is he that keepeth the same sayings of the prophecy of this book. Now we're going to read 12 through 15, and that's going to be it. 12 through 15, brothers and sisters. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Barak are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For outside are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, and murderers, and violators, and whosoever, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Brothers and sisters, at the end of this video, we must follow the commandments of the Most High. And we must do it by faith and a spirit of love to love Yahweh with all our mind, our heart, our body, and our soul. And to love our neighbors, ourself, brothers and sisters. And to walk through and in the spirit of Yahuwah. In Yahusha, in this world, to be the light of the world, the light of the nations, and shine brightly, brothers and sisters, no matter what take place, no matter if you are hurt in it, you suffer in trials, tribulations, whether you're sick or going through some illness, whether you die of them, stay in him, stay in the truth, whether you get your head beheaded, whether you get pneumonia and, and you pass away from that. Stay in him. No matter what happens, stay in this. Keep your faith. For it is what your faith what sets you free. It's your faith and your belief in the spirit of love that will set you free. Remember, without love, you have nothing. Though you follow all these laws, statutes, commandments, if you don't have love, you have nothing. So those two are intertwined, faith and love intertwined together in our belief. And we walk in those in intertwining of faith and love together to prove ourselves on the earth that we are of the light of the day. We are not of the night and we will not do the things that are of the night, which belong to the wicked ones. Hallelujah. Who are brothers and sisters. Thank y'all for tuning into this series. I pray that this series has helped you open your eyes to the house of Yahweh, which is the house of Yahusha, which is the house of Yah, Yahshara, which is the house of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> and Jacob. <laughs> so, uh, thank y'all for tuning in, brothers and sisters. And may you have Barakin, a Barak day. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. All praises to his most set apart name and all esteem to him. Hallelujah. Hua.